Hello, it's Scott Manley here, and this video sequence, as you can guess, is the business end of a space shuttle during ignition and launch. It's actually from a video called Ascent, which has an amazing amount of technical commentary, and I highly recommend it. But the reason I'm showing you it is, is because people ask me regularly, why does a specific rocket look the way it does? Specifically, the exhaust. And with the space shuttle, you had this amazing contrast between the RS-25 engines burning hydrogen and oxygen and they were practically transparent. Meanwhile, the solid rocket boosters that provided most of the thrust at launch produced this intense white smoke. The main engine exhaust is optically thin because it is mainly gas, water vapour. The solid rocket boosters, the exhaust contains a huge amount of particles from the, the propellants. The fuel in the solid rocket boosters is ammonium percolate aluminium and it's all bound together using something called polybutadiene acrylonitrile. All this stuff is mixed together at the factory and ignited at launch time. One of the products that comes out is alumina. That's basically aluminium on oxide and it will condense into tiny little drops. That's basically the smoke. But also because it's mixed together, uh, the mixing isn't always perfect. It's not totally homogenous. You'll have grains where you sometimes have too much uh, oxidizer, sometimes you have too much aluminium. And that means that the grain can actually continue to flow out and in some cases it is still burning as it leaves the nozzle. So let's come back to the RS-25 engines. First of all the exhaust is pretty transparent in, because the temperature is so high that the water which is the exhaust product simply won't condense in time but there's another even more interesting phenomena to note here and that is those hot spots in the exhaust. These are called Mach diamonds or shock diamonds, and they're not exclusive to the space shuttle. You've probably seen them in many different kinds of engines. Here's a fine example in the afterburners of an SR-71B. Now what's going on here is the rocket exhaust is actually lower pressure than the air around it. And that may seem very strange because you think of rockets being very high energy, high pressure systems. But in fact, what rockets are trying to do is throw the gas backwards very fast. And in the reference frame of the exhaust, the pressure could actually be lower than the atmosphere around it. So as the gas leaves the nozzle, it finds the ambient atmosphere squeezing it inwards where upon it eventually gets squeezed down so far that it's now higher pressure and so it begins to expand back outwards. And so you get a series of oscillations and that's why you see multiple shock diamonds coming out of an exhaust. Now I have a whole other video on rocket nozzles, but the basic rule is you want the pressure of your rocket exhaust to be exactly the same as the ambient pressure where it's firing. Now the space shuttle engines, they have to work from all the way at ground level, all the way up into orbit. So they actually want to be wider so that the air exhaust pressure is lower. So to allow them to operate most efficiently at vacuum, they are wider than they should be. They are over expanded. And as a consequence, when the exhaust gases leave that engine bell, it quickly gets squished down and it produces those three very obvious uh, compression zones. And if the imagery is right, you might see even more. Now, I'm not going to go deep into the science behind the colours of light coming out here, but there are two main mechanisms. The first is black body radiation, and that requires a body. It requires small particles in the exhaust. In the case of the solid rockets, you are getting uh, alumina. In the case of things like kerosene, liquid oxygen, you're going to have some uh, particles of soot forming. So those particles will be at the same temperature as the rest of the exhaust gases, and they will emit like a black body. Whereas the gas that makes up the exhaust from the uh, main engines, that is not a very good black body radiator. Instead, it emits this blue light, which is associated with chemical reactions. In particular, I think it's down to the hydroxyl groups interacting with uh, hydrogen to create uh, water. But many of you will know the Delta IV and its epic launch fireball. You'll also note that the engines on the Delta IV produce an exhaust which is much deeper, much more intense than the space shuttle main engines. 
And that's because the engines on the Delta IV were designed to be much cheaper than the Space Shuttle's engines. The Space Shuttle engines are actively cooled by running liquid hydrogen through the nozzle, whereas in the Delta IV, they are made from graphite and they are designed to ablate during the heat of combustion. That means that ablating material, that carbon, is entering into the exhaust and making it bright and easy to see. It's also that you can see the interior of the nozzles in this case because they are allowed to rise to much higher temperatures. The interior of the Space Shuttle engine engines look just simply like metal because they are being continuously cooled by the flow of hydrogen. Which I guess kind of neatly brings us to this early test of the Merlin engine. This is using an ablative nozzle but it's using kerosene and liquid oxygen. In this case there's a lot of carbon in the fuel itself. Kerosene or RP1 generally contains carbon uh, chains of about 12 to 15 carbon atoms. And while the combustion is fast, it's not fast enough to burn up everything before it completely escapes the chamber. So between these secondary reactions and the soot, you get a very intense exhaust. And as something of an intermediate, here's a proton rocket. It's powered by a hypergolic mixture of dinitrogen tetroxide and unsymmetrical dimethyl hydrazine, which is a very long word, but the molecule is a lot smaller than your typical hydrocarbon chain in kerosene and requires less energy to break down. It's much more desperate to react with the uh, dinitrogen tetroxide, and therefore you get more complete combustion and a less intense flame. And I guess the final logical step in simplifying molecules is methane. So this is SpaceX's Raptor engine that's supposed to power their BFR. It's in development right now. And it runs on methane and liquid oxygen, which means that it, again, has more complete combustion than their Merlin engine, so the exhaust is much more transparent. It also has these beautiful shock diamonds in there to look at. And while we've got this footage up, let's talk about one case where the colour of the exhaust really is a chemical signature. So when the engine starts up, it produces a bright green flash, and this is because they're using a pyrophoric ignition fluid called triethyl borane. And it's the boron in here that produces this beautiful green chemical signature. You can actually see the green when the engines reignite during a Falcon 9 landings, and sometimes during second stage ignition it's possible to see these. Now let's switch over to another even more classic rocket, one which I do get asked questions about. So this is the launch of a Saturn V, most powerful rocket in the world, powered by five F1 engines. These burn kerosene and liquid oxygen, and as their engines clear the flame pit, you're going to notice something very interesting. Now, you can see the black of the engine bells, you can see the intense, bright flame, but there's a section between the end of the nozzle and the start of that flame where the exhaust seems to be dark compared to the rest of it. What's going on here? Again, this is a consequence of the nozzle design. To keep the nozzle extension cool, instead of having it actively cooled by running uh, liquid oxygen through it, what they did was they ran a lower temperature gas along the outside wall, and that gas would protect the wall. This is called film cooling, and the place they got the cooler gases from was the turbine exhaust. They would take the output of that, which would be fuel-rich to keep the temperature low, and they would run it out there, and because it was fuel-rich, it would be very sooty and very black, and it would also be cooler. So that's why it looks black when it's coming out, because not only is it a lower temperature, but it's also optically thick, and it's protecting, it's stopping the light escaping. The other thing to note is that as soon as the gases exit, because they're fuel rich, they do want to catch fire and there's actually a flame front running up the side of this dark and it's basically chasing upwards all the time but the exhaust is moving too fast for the flame front to catch up. You can get a good idea of the plumbing in this cross section here. Now the F1 isn't the only engine that uses film cooling, it's just one of the best examples that we have in terms of visuals where you can see the very dark cold gas, well it's cold, it's about hundreds of degrees centigrade rather than the core which is thousands of degrees centigrade. And it gives me an opportunity to play a few more seconds of this awesome launch sequence. Who doesn't love the Saturn V? Now you've probably guessed by now that unlike the hydrogen oxygen flame, this is a kerosene and liquid oxygen environment so it's producing soot and those particles that are in the exhaust make it a much better black body emitter, which is why the exhaust does emit so much more light than the pure hydrogen flames of the space shuttle. 
There are, of course, other combinations of rocket fuel which produce brighter or darker exhaust, but generally it comes down to how big the molecules and particles are that are condensing in the exhaust. All of the examples I've shown so far have been at ground level, but of course as the rocket moves up through the atmosphere there's another effect that kicks in which changes the way the exhaust looks. Now remember I said that the shock diamonds were because the rocket engine was producing gas that although it was moving fast was at a lower pressure than the air at sea level. As the rocket gets higher and higher the pressure drops, the outside pressure drops and therefore the exhaust will begin to expand outwards. And so instead of this tight stream with the shock diamonds, it becomes this giant wide fan-shaped exhaust. Or in the case of the Falcon 9, it begins to resemble a flower if you ask me. Now in the case of the Falcon 9, because a lot of the light is coming from soot heated by black body radiation, as the exhaust expands outwards, that means that it's actually cooling down. So the exhaust stops emitting light and in fact, as it gets higher, will start to obscure light. So yeah, this has been a rough high-level discussion and illustration of a few examples. It, I mean, rocket exhausts, they look amazing. You know, they're part of the poetry and the art of rocket science. But I think it also makes them more beautiful if you actually understand why some of these things are happening the way they do. I'm Scott Manley. Fly safe.